I was sitting up in one of the box seats, and I had some activists with me. And they were like, well, why isn't he talking about voting rights? And, and why isn't he talking about some of our issues? John Kerry believes in America. And he knows that it's not enough for just some of us to prosper. I understood that he had to deal with a broad range of issues and that he was running for the U.S. Senate to represent everybody in Illinois. If there is a child on the south side of Chicago who can't read, that matters to me even if it's not my child. And I actually got into arguments defending him. I was saying, wait a minute, we, we cannot fight to get our best to the mainstream and then tell them don't talk to the mainstream about mainstream issues. It is that fundamental belief, I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper, that makes this country work. It's what allows us to pursue our individual dreams and yet still come together as one American family. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. It's his position as an American politician. His goal is to represent the best interests of the entire nation from a particular position and standpoint as a black man, but broadening out not only what that blackness might mean, but how it might also encompass and include all of America. Now, even as we speak, there are those who are preparing to divide us. The spin masters, the negative ad peddlers, who embrace the politics of anything goes. Well, I say to them tonight, there is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. The pundits, the pundits like the slight... You know, he made that statement, there's not a black America or white America, there's the United States of America. No, that's not true. There's totally a black America and a white America. And there's a Latino America, a gay America, a poor America. Um, there's a America that is disproportionately incarcerated. There are all of those things. We are one people, all of us pledging allegiance to the Stars and Stripes, all of us defending the United States of America. But you also had to understand that he was speaking aspirationally, that people wanted to belong to a country in which those were not permanent and impermeable distinctions. In the end, in the end, that's what this election is about. Do we participate in a politics of cynicism or do we participate in a politics of hope? I don't think Obama had any illusion that Everybody had transcended race and had transcended historical animosities and all the rest, and everybody was in a full embrace of great unity. It was a new kind of American optimism voiced by somebody who embodied this melding of identity. It's the hope of slaves sitting around a fire singing freedom songs. The hope of immigrants setting out for distant shores. The hope of a young naval lieutenant bravely patrolling the Mekong Delta. The hope of a mill worker's son who dares to defy the odds. The hope of a skinny kid with a funny name who believes that America has a place for him too. I was there at the convention and it was riveting, electrifying. It was comparable to King standing at the summit of expectation in 1963, where he identifies a golden thread of the American dream and weaves it into a tapestry of American democratic possibility. Hope, hope in the face of difficulty, hope in the face of uncertainty, the audacity of hope. In the end, that is God's greatest gift to us, the bedrock of this nation. Now, 
I'm not saying that the 2004 speech measured up to the I Have a Dream speech in terms of rhetorical eloquence, though it was eloquent. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. But it did have an electrifying effect in that same way. That was a tremendous coming out party for Barack Obama.